Hello and welcome to Applicata Biblica. Uh, I can't even say it. I made up that title because I wanted to do something. I wanted to make Applied Bible, but there's already an Applied Bible on YouTube. So I turned it into Latin uh, because I'm way worse at Greek than I am at Latin. So, so I made that, that title up, and that's why I call it that. It just means Applied Bible. Thank you for coming. And we're going to kick off a series that I call Characters, Characters in the Bible. And essentially, we're just going to go through and study characters and how they relate to God and how God relates to them and how we can learn from how God interacts with these people and what he wants from us. Now, um, this first part, God is the main character. You have to start with God. If you're going to uh, do any kind of study of his words, you know, especially you know, what we call the Bible, and we're going to kick it off by going into Gen Genesis chapter 1. And I have these questions that I made up a long time ago for a high school class. They're still relevant. Some of them are kind of hokey pokey, but, you know, we'll get through them. And we just kind of want to, I'm actually going to read through this text. And I'll put that on the screen for you to read along. And it's important to just kind of read along and just... You know, don't try to get anything out of it. Don't try to interpret it. Just listen to the story. And then we're just going to go over a few main bullet points and get what we can out of it. Because chapter one, right, the description of God will absolutely dictate the, the, the rest of the books, all of the books moving forward, uh, coming out of Genesis chapter one, will rely on that chapter. And so that is a chapter where God creates the world. And when we see that, I would just we're going to point out what we need to notice because the theme will play throughout all of the scriptures. This first part will, will play out, the, these first three chapters especially will play out. And we're going to read these chapters. After that, we may not read everything. We'll probably just hit a few important notes and just to get the context. So let's just go ahead and read that. <clears throat> Genesis 1, chapter 1. In the beginning, now I just want you to notice how many times the name God comes up. Just notice that as we go along. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, being without form and empty, and darkness on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moving gently on the face of the waters. Then God said, Let light be, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God separated between the light and darkness. And God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let an expanse be in the midst of the waters, and let it be dividing between the waters and the waters. And God made the expanse, or the sky, and he separated between the waters which were under the expanse and the waters which were above the expanse, like clouds. And it was so. And God called the expanse heavens. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be collected into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10, and God called the dry land earth and he called the collection of the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout tender sprouts the plant seeding seed, the fruit tree producing fruit according to its kind, whichever seed is in it on the earth. And it was so. And the earth bore tender sprouts and the plant seeding seed according to its kind and the fruit tree producing fruit 
according to its kind, whichever seed is in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let luminaries be in the expanse of the heavens to divide between the day and the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for luminaries in the, in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. And God made the two large, great, the two great luminaries, the great luminary to rule the day and the small luminary and the stars to rule the night, the moon. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide between the light and the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Verse 19. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarmers, having a soul of life. And let the birds fly over the earth on the face of the expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea animals, and all that creeps, having a living soul which swarmed the waters, according to its kind, and every spirit, with wing according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply in the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the soul of life according to its kind cattle and creepers and its beasts of the earth according to its kind and it was so and God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind and cattle according to its kind and all creepers of the ground according to its kind and God saw that it was good and God said let us make you get that did you hear that let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over all the creepers creeping on the earth. And God created the man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. And he created them, male and female, and God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the seas, and over birds of the heavens, and over all beasts creeping on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant seeding seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree, which is the fruit of a tree seeding seed, it, it, it shall be food for you. So, vegetarians. And to every beast of the earth, and to all birds of the heavens, and to every creeper on the earth, which has in it a living soul, every green plant, is for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. So that's creation. That's what this chapter is about, is God creating everything, including the universes, the stars, the sun and the moon, he separated, uh, he separated the land from the water. He did all these things. He created all the creatures. He takes care of his creatures. He, did you notice that they have souls? Did you notice that mankind had souls? But they are given dominion over, the, over all the animals on the earth. And we are made in the image of God. 
And uh, like, I, like I noted, God is not one singular person. And this is something that we will figure out as we go along. And we'll see how that works, especially when we get in, you know, when you get all the way into Christianity, you figure out how this all works together. Christianity is still many, many, many years off from this, but it all works together. So in my booklet, which are some very simplistic sort of questions to think about, and uh, I, I basically just said write down as many uh, words that describe a God that can do all the things that God does in this chapter. Like if he's strong, you would write down, well, he's, I think he's strong. And, and maybe you would go ahead and elaborate on that. Like why you think, well, he's strong because he created all these things by just speaking them into existence. Uh, it's, it's definitely manifested in this chapter. He speaks things and they happen. God is also very orderly, and we're going to see this play out through all the scriptures. When God gets to Moses and he, he dispenses a law, you see great order, and much of it points back to this time. And uh, this, Moses isn't coming still for a very long time. But when God does dispense his law to, to Moses, much of it points back to the order that he created it. And because everything God's making here is very perfect, it's very good. And then after he makes man, everything is very good. So uh, that's a good start, right? That's a great start right there. That God is just, he's just this great, magnificent God who can uh, do all these things. He's He's obviously very powerful, very wise, very all-knowing. And uh, we're still trying to figure out how things got here. We're just banging our heads against the wall with what we call science and, and just kind of driving off a cliff trying to, trying to pretend like we know something. And we don't know anything. Anyway, but um, just really quick, knowing these things about God, what type of attitude should I have toward him? That's the question. That, that's the next question I have. Well, obviously, if God made me, right, if he created me, I should respect him. I should have a great reverence for him because just like he made me, he can destroy me as well if that, if, you know, if for whatever reason he chose to do that. So, and we're going to find out uh, just what that means in the, in the next coming uh, reviews and lessons. So there's a great reverence we should have for God, not only for his great power, but for his great blessings that he's given to the human, to mankind. He has chosen mankind uh, to be a very special creation out of all the creation. And it's even going to get more specific uh, in the next lesson. So this is very, uh, you know, this is who our God is. He's, he's obviously very good. He's given us everything we need. He's given us dominion over everything. He's just, and he's very orderly. That's who he is. So uh, the other question I had is, what does let us make man tell us about God? Well, there's God is not just one person. And this is something that, People have finally come, you know, they came to these conclusions, very much so, understanding it, especially during Christianity, that God is, is more than just Jehovah God. And uh, we, you know, we can talk a little about, we'll, we'll talk more and more about that as we go along. We see Jehovah God as the Father, and that, that is kind of how you look at it. Jehovah God is the Father. And then, of course, the Christian sees Jesus, and this is going to come much later, but Jesus is the Son. And then we need the Holy Spirit as well. And you find that revelation in the New Testament, what we call the New Testament, where Jesus actually tells his, his disciples, you know, you're going to go out and you're going to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
where he's equating them all together. And we're going to get into a bunch more of this as well. So uh, one crazy kooky question I had, this is if you were Adam or Eve, what would you say to God? What would you talk to God about? Well, because in the next, in the next chapter, we're going to see that God actually walks around in the garden with them because we're going to see that they're in a garden. And, uh, you know, I don't know why. I ask that because I, I think high school uh, students have a really good imagination. And, you know, well, well what would you talk about? Well, probably just talk about your day or things you worked on. Maybe there are concerns. You know, this is this God knows everything. He's obviously very, very knowledgeable and very strong and can do anything for you. And, uh, and so I just see this, I just see this in my mind's eye, this relationship, it's a perfect relationship, God with mankind and mankind dwelling with God and they're at peace with one another. And, uh, and, and I just think that their, their exchanges are pleasant. That's just how I see it. And, and, and I'm making it up, right? But this was put in first so that we can see what's going to happen later. So we see um, that these main points point to uh, the authority of God and his creation. We realize that God is not just one person. We see God as the provider and maker of all things. That's why you see people when they're a lot of Christians before they eat, they will pray to God and thank God because they, you know, we realize that he is the one who's providing these things for us. He's the one who set things in motion that we can have a, we can make a pizza or have some tacos. Yeah, I mean, you know, my favorites, you know, something like that. And, uh, and so, uh, how does this point to Jesus though, right? Well, it's not exactly pointing to Jesus just yet. It doesn't seem like, but when you get to John in the first chapter of John, John says it very plainly that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he's talking about Jesus. So John in his, John is so deep in his writing and he points to Jesus and says, he's God, and we need to realize that. He just comes right out of the gate. He doesn't mince words or anything. He goes straight to the core of who Jesus is. He's God. And that, you have to, get, you have to come to that conclusion uh, you know, later on when we get into all these, uh, all these scriptures, and most especially what we call the New Testament. Because either Jesus was God, or he was just a guy, and you know he didn't do what he did, and we'll, we will get to that at some point. So those are some of the most important things that we need to see from the get-go. Everything's going well. God made mankind, and He made everything else. And he's actually dwelling with God and everything's going good. That's all you really need to know from this chapter. Uh, when we get into the next couple of chapters, uh, we're going we're gonna to see uh, the covenant that God makes with man and the covenant, the implied covenant that man has with a wife. And, uh, and from there, we're going to go into how it is that mankind falls. So thank you very much for, for coming. And, and it's, you know, this is, this is not hard stuff. This is very basic thing, you know, basic stuff from the scriptures. And I appreciate you coming. And we'll see you in the next one. Oh, I'm going to put a link uh, in the description of uh, a blog where I'm putting all these questions up. And, or if you want to get the sheet yourself, you can work from it yourself. It's no charge. It's all free. And, uh, and, and then you can know what we're going to talk about beforehand. And maybe if you have some thoughts, you can put, put your own thoughts in the, uh, in the comments section. Thank you for coming. We'll see you later.